students. We are continuing where we left off yesterday, if you recall. Uh, yesterday, we talked about machines and efficiency and mechanical advantage. And so today, we are going to go through a list of simple machines. In fact, we're going to go through a common list of six simple machines. And then I'm going to quiz you at the end of this little lesson today. So pay attention and use your noggins to help you figure out different kinds of simple machines. So first of all, what is a simple machine? Well, very, very simply put, <laughs> you can see some examples over there of them behind me. Incline plane, wedge, screw, pulley, wheel and axle, and lever. Uh, actually, that's a pretty good picture of them all right there. There are six simple machines we're going to be discussing. But by definition, a simple machine is a basic instrument that can increase the mechanical advantage. So remember yesterday, we finished up with mechanical advantage. And me what is mechanical advantage? If you recall, it is how much a machine multiplies the effort force, and it makes work easier. It makes work easier, and that's what machines are all about. So a simple machine is a basic instrument that can increase the mechanical advantage. And so let's just get to our list and get through our list of six simple machines, beginning with number one. Number one is the inclined plane. The inclined plane is a flat, slanted surface. Here's a picture of an inclined plane uh, that is being used to help this individual, this construction worker perhaps, apply a force by pushing this wheelbarrow from a lower ground level to an upper level, and it's probably filled with sand or concrete or who knows what it is, but it's heavy, no doubt about that. And an inclined plane is making this easier for this individual to, uh, to, to do the work. Now, why don't you think of some examples of inclined planes, and give me some examples now. All right, well, here's a couple of examples. A ramp, a ramp. Uh, there are many examples of ramps. We have ramps at curbs in cities to make it easier for individuals to get from street level to the curb level. We've got ramps at schools, perhaps going down to a basement like our school, make it easier to, uh, to, uh, to bring down and bring up supplies and materials. You can probably think of other examples of ramps as well. Uh, a doorstop could be an example of an inclined plane also. Now I'm gonna show you a picture here and I want you to pause uh, when you see this picture and see if you can pick out the inclined plane that I'm using to help me build my addition to my house. If you said the ladder, you are absolutely correct. I'm using a ladder as an inclined plane in order to push these heavy sheets of plywood up to the second floor when I was building uh, my two-floor addition a few years ago. Uh, but yes, yeah, simple machines definitely make work easier. Remember what work is? Applying a force through a distance. All right, number two. Number two is a wedgie. I mean a wedge. A wedge. A wedge is an inclined plane that moves an inclined plane that moves. And here's a great example, this picture of an inclined plane that moves. And guess what this is called? It's a wedge. It's the simplest type of wedge. It's simply called a wedge. 
and this wedge is being used to uh, to split lumber. Now, why don't you uh, pause for a moment and see if you can think of other examples of wedges. All right, hopefully you came up with some good ideas here. A couple other examples, a knife, an axe, and a key. All examples of wedges or inclined planes, a flat, slanted surface that moves. Think about that in the case of all of these three examples. A knife, axe, key, all of them are flat slanted surfaces or have a combination of flat slanted surfaces that move from one place to another in order to accomplish some task. So I'm going to show you a wedge in this next picture, and I want to see if you can identify where the wedge is. All right, that one might be a little bit more difficult. I am holding a trowel, a cement trowel that I'm putting a parge coat on the outside of the foundation of my addition, and it is really a flat slanted surface, a flat surface that I'm holding slanted, and I am moving the cement across the, uh, the surface of my concrete block in order to accomplish uh, a task. So I'm doing work. I am applying a force through a distance with a flat slanted surface. By the way, there's another example of a wedge in this picture. I wonder if you can pick it out. It's tougher. It is the tarp itself. The tarp is a flat slanted surface. The year I built my addition, we had a lot of rain that year. And, uh, and so I had to put a tarp up if I wanted to get my project done. And the tarp, if you think about it, think about it from the vantage point of a raindrop. Rain falls down and hits this slant, flat slanted surface and rolls off the tarp. Relative to the raindrop, that tarp is a wedge. So would a, uh, a roof itself, a slanted roof. All right, let's move on to another. Oh, I just gave this one away. Hmm. Can anyone see another example of a wedge in this picture? If you said the slope of the roof, you're absolutely right. But do you see another example of a wedge? The hammer, the claw, more specifically, the claw of the hammer. When removing nails, it is a flat slanted surface that moves in order to force nails out that may have been misplaced. Uh, so there's another example of a wedge in that picture. All right, let's move on to number three. Number three is called a screw. A screw is an inclined plane around a cylinder. An inclined plane around a cylinder. Uh, we can see this example of a car jack. Some car jacks work with a screw. Uh, in them. And when you turn the screw, you can lift enormous weights. Actually, I don't know if this is a car jack. This might be a house jack. It works in a similar way. You can prop up an entire house by using a house jack like this, that uh, you turn a screw and it can do an enormous amount of work. So let me, uh, let me show you the next picture and see if you can pick out the screw in this picture here. Actually, I didn't have a picture there. Here, I'll show you the picture here. Here's a picture. Can you pick out the screw? I know. I won't even pause for this one. It's so obvious. You can see this anchor bolt. This anchor bolt is a screw that is actually holding my house down on the foundation and keeping it from blowing away in strong winds. Here some here are some examples of other screws. I should have paused here to have you give me some examples. But a, a screw, obviously, a bolt, as I showed you there in the picture, uh, a jar lid, 
And maybe I will pause. Let's see if you can think of any other examples of screws. All right, very good. So let's move on. I, I already showed you the picture of this, uh, this bolt, but let's move on to number four. Number four is a lever. A lever is a rigid bar, a rigid bar free to pivot around what's called a fulcrum. And here we have an example of a lever, a rigid bar. It could be a stick, it could be a metal bar, it could be a number of things, accomplishing the task of moving a big boulder by using a fulcrum. And if you paid attention to yesterday's video with mechanical advantage, you know why that, uh, that fulcrum is placed so close to the big boulder. Uh, but let, let's, I'll pause it now and see if you can think of any other examples of a lever. All right, you may have struggled with this one, but uh, here are some examples. A crowbar, kind of like the one that I was showing you in that picture there. Uh, it could be a stick, could be metal, but a crowbar. Now, think of these other two. A paddle. A paddle. If you've ever gone paddling, canoeing, kayaking, or even in a rowboat, a paddle or an oar is a bar or a rigid bar or stick free to pivot around a fulcrum, whether that fulcrum is your other hand or a, uh, the boat itself, to maneuver you, to move you through the water. A pair of pliers also. A pair of pliers, great example of a lever. Imagine one of the the, uh, the sides of the pair of pliers as stationary and the other one pivoting around a fulcrum uh, in order to accomplish work. So I'm going to show you a picture here and see if you can pick out the lever in this picture. Yeah, a big stick. Great example of a lever. When I was building my addition to my home, unbeknownst to me at the time, while I was excavating <clears throat> with a tool, I uncovered an abandoned cesspit. A cesspit is the precursor to a, uh, a septic system. And uh, this was uh, very, very old and covered. It was basically a hole in the ground where all of the effluent from the house, all of the liquid waste and solid waste material would be piped into a hole in the ground. And uh, this was uh, in use long before my house had uh, uh, a public sewage system tied into a public sewage system, probably in the 1950s. So this was this was in use long before the 1950s. And I had to fill it in. But before I could fill it in, I had to move these gigantic concrete blocks now, I was using all hand tools to, uh, to build my addition, so I found a big old fence post lying around, and I used that as my lever and some of the concrete blocks as my fulcrum and was able to move around these, these concrete blocks, which were literally hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Now, I'm going to show you another picture. If you can pick out the lever in this picture as I am filling in my cesspool. My cesspool or cesspit, does anyone see the lever here? It's the shovel. The shovel itself is a great example of a lever. Straight rigid bar. There's the fulcrum, my hand, and I'm doing work with it, filling in this 10-foot deep hole, one shovel full at a time. And that took a couple of weeks to fill in that hole and to tamp it down every inch along the way so that my, uh, my slab foundation would not settle at all. That was a, uh, an unexpected big job that I did with simple machines. All right, number five. Number five are the wheel and axle. A wheel and axle, uh, simply defined, is a circular object turning around an axle or a smaller circular object. 
And, uh, you know, we could expand on this definition by saying it's a larger cylinder around a smaller cylinder. That's essentially what a wheel and axle is. And the, the way scientifically that a wheel and axle helps us is that there are two different size cylinders. And that difference in size is what enables you to have a mechanical advantage. Think of it in terms of a multi-speed bicycle. How many of you have a, uh, like a 10-speed bike at home? If you've got a multi-speed bike, then you've probably seen how the gears work and you can change the diameter of the gear with at least as far as the chain going around a different size diameter in order to make work easier for you when going up a hill. So can any of you think of any examples of a wheel and axle? All right, here are some examples of a wheel. Whether that wheel is on a bicycle, car, motorcycle, what have you, wheels are examples of a wheel and axle. A windmill, did you think of a windmill? A doorknob, a doorknob is actually a wheel and axle. When you turn a doorknob, it's a larger cylinder around a smaller cylinder that you are accomplishing the task of opening or closing a door. Let's see if you can pick out the wheel and axle in this picture here. Should be pretty obvious to you. My handy dandy trusty workhorse of a vehicle, my 1997 Jeep Grand Cherokee that I am still driving, even though it doesn't have as many parts to it as it does in this picture because I'm slowly losing all of the parts to my Jeep. But uh, I used my Jeep to help me build my entire addition to my home, a 24 by 16 foot two floor addition. All of the materials that went back and forth were carried by this beast, the, uh, the Jeep. Uh, it has been a very trustworthy vehicle, I must say. So let's continue. Let's continue. Number six is the pulley. A pulley can be described or defined as a rope or chain around a grooved wheel. And that grooved wheel is a wheel and an axle. So here's an example of somebody pulling an object up through a pulley with a rope. Could be a rope or a chain around a grooved wheel so that the rope or the chain doesn't come dislodged. And that grooved wheel is around an axle. Can any of you think of any other examples of where a pulley is used. Ah, you may have struggled a little bit with this one, but if you have a window shade at home, window shades. You pull a rope down and the shade goes up. Great example of a pulley system. Every morning you come to school or every day you see a flag waving proudly on a flag pole. How did that flag get up there? Through a pulley. Those of you that might be automotively inclined, maybe you've got a, uh, uh, a workshop in your garage and you have to lift heavy things, a block and tackle can be used to lift an entire engine out of a car with one hand. And the way that works is through a series of pulleys in that block and tackle. Let's see if you can pick out any pulleys in the following picture here. Yes, this dates this picture. My daughters helped me build the addition to our house when they were just young little lassies. And uh, I put them to work. I needed help to get the sheathing up uh, to the second floor uh, to nail it in place by hand with my hammer. And so I put them to work. And you can see here there are some pulleys attached to my Jeep. And they are Pulling the rope, and of course, safety is their number one priority, so they're wearing gloves. But this rope went through a series of pulleys and helped them 
actually lift the uh, 50 pound sheathings up high enough for me to work on them while I was standing on a ladder. And so I put them to work using simple machines. And so you can't see it in this picture, I don't think, but I had pulleys up here all over the place to help lift all of the lumber that was too heavy to lift by the ladder. And I put them to work and made them lift, uh, lift heavy things uh, to the addition. And in, in case you're curious, that's what the addition looks like now. Uh, it is a little bit more to it now than this, but you can see here was the original house. And here's my 16 by 24 foot addition with, with my girls, two bedrooms on the first floor, a huge storage room on the second floor, and a great huge uh, area for them to play with their friends now up on the, uh, the second floor. It's a huge entertainment room, basically, and a nice loft area, too, which uh, is my little tiny space for me. But uh, I was able to build that large addition simply by using simple machines. So simple machines, not so simple when, uh, when you need some help. So I'm going to give you a quiz now. Let's see how well you were paying attention. I'm going to show you ex an example of a simple machine, and I want you to yell out together as a class, what of the six, which one of the six types of simple machines do you think this is an example of? So I'm going to go back to our close-up view, and we'll start with some easy ones here. Here I have a flat, slanted surface that, uh, you know, things could actually go up or down. So what is this an example of, everybody? Very good. Inclined plane. How about, ooh, how about a knife blade or a saw? Uh, that flat, slanted surface that would be moving through something. What is that an example of, everyone? A wedge is correct. By the way, a nail could also be an example of a wedge. Flat, slanted surface moving through something. That could be a wedge. Or... What is the back of a hammer called? What kind of simple machine is this? Everybody. Good, a wedge. And this wedge can be used to whoop, remove the, the nail from that piece of wood. All right, let's see here. Well, let's look at this. A pair of scissors. Now let's imagine that this handle is attached to the part of the scissors that don't move and the other side does move around a fulcrum here what could we consider what kind of simple machine do you think a pair of scissors are did you say lever you're absolutely right and by the way on the blade side of a pair of scissors we have a slant flat slanted surface which is sharpened to cut through things what kind of simple machine are the blades yeah wedges fantastic all right so far so good so far so good let's get the next one here how about this one Tell me out loud, what kind of a simple machine do you think this C-clamp is? Hopefully you said a screw, because this is a bit, oh wait, was I holding it up too high? No, you could see that, right? This big screw can be used to clamp things in place. I won't use my finger, because I could totally break my finger with this, but C-clamps, great example of a screw. All right, next one. What kind of simple machine is turning right now woo, to make the motorcycle run? And don't forget the second part, wheel and axle. Very good. And there's one more, and I've got one more example to show you. 
And this is something we're going to be using in the lab tomorrow. It is a grooved wheel around an axle. Any idea what this is called, everybody? Pulley. Very good. So study up on your simple machines. Tomorrow, we're going to be doing a lab activity with a simple machine. We're going to try and make work easier for all of us. And so let me head back to our notes. And uh, for now, I'm going to say in front of my picture here of my addition to my home, which, by the way, took me several summers to complete because I did it all by myself, all by hand, using no power tools, but only simple machines. So in front of that lovely picture, I'll say bye-bye.